The first part of this video is going to be some very basic Node.js, Express, and HTML boilerplate setup. So here you can see where we're going to end up at the end of this video. So all we do is we set up a node server, we get it to serve a, a static HTML file with a JavaScript and CSS file associated with it, and set up some containers that are going to allow us to record, print out what we've recorded, print out what Jet GPT says back, and play an audio file that we'll be able to hear. If you've done this stuff and you're comfortable with it, you can skip this entire video. We're just going to get to a starting point, and you can just grab the source code from the files mentioned below in the description of the video. If you haven't done it and you want to see how to set up a server and client, this is a good video that will walk you quickly through that basic setup. If you don't care and you haven't done this a lot, but you just want to get to the AI stuff, that's fine too. Just uh, grab the code and go to the next section, but otherwise, watch on. The one thing you may want to sit in for is how to set up the Google Cloud Console to allow us API access to the text-to-speech and speech-to-text stuff, which we will go to now. So this is the Google Cloud Console, or GCP. You need to have a account, and then you can go to your console. In your console, you'll have projects. So we need to make sure that we create a project. Now, I already have one that's logged into it to, by default. It's called stt-tts, but we need to create one, which is what I'm doing here. I'm going to say new project and give it a name. I'm going to create it. So now I need to give it access to the APIs we need, which are the speech-to-text service and the text-to-speech service. So here I'm searching for those, and I find the cloud speech-to-text API. Now here it looks like I'm still using my pre-existing project where this has already been enabled, so I'm going to switch it over to my project that I just created, which hasn't enabled it yet. I'm going to say enable APIs and services, search for it again here. Click on Cloud Text-to-Speech, and Enable the API. Now I need Speech-to-Text, so I'm going to search for that and enable it just like I did the last one. Now I just need a service account, which is what allows you to be billed for the service. So I'm creating that here and giving it a random name. Hit Done, and then make sure you've actually set up a way to be billed. I won't walk you through all of that. Um, but I will show you where to access it, which is under your account, payments and subscriptions, manage payment methods, and then go through the whole process of setting up your payment. As far as writing code, I use VS Code. I think a lot of people do. The way I always start a project is I make an empty folder, and I make sure that folder is open in VS Code, and then I just start with an index.js file for any Node and Express app. Then I bring up a terminal window, the shortcut for that is control tilde. The next thing I'm going to do is run npm init, which just starts our node app, and I'm going to accept all the defaults here. And that creates this package.json file, which you'll see just appeared. That's going to allow us to install all of our node modules, which are libraries that are going to help us write our code more efficiently. So I already know a bunch of the modules we're going to need to start off, so I'm going to paste those in here. And starting with Express, which is going to be the framework for handling our server requests and make that process a little bit easier. So to install that, I'm going to say npm i express. It's going to install. And now, if you look at our package.json, we're going to see under dependencies, Express is listed. So we need to do that for all these node modules that don't come with Express. So looking at this list here, uh, this just creates our variable that's going to hold our Express instance, so we don't need to install that. Uh, body parser we will need to install, npmi body parser. Uh, path actually comes with node as well as process, I believe, uh, as well as file system. So uh, fs promises, that is a component of the fs library, don't need to install that. But this UUID, we will need to install. And that's just going to help us generate random IDs that we'll use for storing these files, since they're just temporary files. Uh, OK, so body parser just is a way of 
making sense of what the client is sending us in the body of its request and parsing those out into different the different variables that, that we'll need to call our functions. Path just helps us figure out what our server path is and work with that to store files and retrieve files and things like that more effectively. Uh, FS is our file system, and FS promises is a thing that allows us to run functions that deal with the file system and then be notified when they're done so to sort of like freeze our code and wait for a response from the file system before we execute any more code. And as I mentioned, this UUID just generates random IDs. Next thing we need is a port for our server to run on. This is kind of the standard way of node specifying a port, which is to say our port is going to equal process.emv.port, which is a variable, or port 33333, however many threes that is. Now, what is process.emv? Uh, env is an environment variables file, which we don't have yet, and we'll set that up in a bit. Um, but if we were to specify in our environment variables a different port, it would use that. Otherwise, it's just going to use this default value here. The next thing we're going to need is a couple of directories. One is going to serve our front end templates. So I'm calling that templates. And another is going to need to serve our static files like images, fonts, style sheets, uh, potentially audio files if we wanted to have those available on the front end. So that's going to be called public. So I've pasted that in here and it's what it's saying is it's saying the path to the templates directory is going to be our current working directory, CWD, plus the folder templates. Same thing here, public directory, current path plus public. So we need to make those public templates. Done. Now I'm going to paste in a few things that the app is going to use. And for our public directory, we need to tell Node that this is a static directory, or express rather. Um, so we're just saying app use express.static public directory. We're going to tell it to use this body parser, which was one of our requirements up here. And the body parser just helps us parse what is sent from the client uh, in a way that is consistent with how the browser tends to pass data along to the server. The last bit of boilerplate we need on the server side of things is this code I'm pasting in here. So I'm going to say, if someone types in our URL of our website and they don't include any other slash whatever, it's just going to send the index.html file. And I'm telling it that the root directory that we're going to serve index.html out of is our templates folder, which we set up here. So in here, I'm going to need a new file called index.html. Then what I'm going to tell our server to do is listen on the port that we specified up here for anything that comes through. So now we just want to see if our server starts and if it serves up this index.html file. Now this is a blank file, so I'm just going to put in a quick message here. This should be able to serve it. And the way that you start node is you just type the command node and then you give it the file you want to run. So if I type node index, it should start up my server. And now if I open up a browser and go to that local host, I see my message. So we know our server is running. Now the last thing I'm going to do, which is just common convention, is say my app needed to do a bunch of things when it started up, not just run node index. You can see in our package.json file, we have these scripts, and one of them is a testing script that just came by default. Um, but what you commonly see is a start script, and so I'm just going to paste that in. Start just runs that command we just ran, node index.js. So if I wanted to start my app again, I could say node index, but I can also say npm start, and it'll do the exact same thing. Now let's go back to this index.html file and erase this message because what we're going to need is an actual HTML page that is capable of recording the user's input. So we're going to need a record button. We're going to need 
a place to log out what we are saying to ChatGPT. We're going to need a place to log out what ChatGPT is saying back to us. And we're going to need an audio player that is capable of playing the file that ChatGPT quote unquote speaks back to us. So I always start with some basic HTML5 boilerplate. I have some extension which handles this for me. So this should seem familiar to you if you've written any HTML code in the past. We have our title inside this head section here and we're gonna call this audio chat GPT and then our body is gonna be able to enclose all of our presentational elements for the page. So I'm just gonna paste those in I've got an overall site container. I like to do that just in case we want like a standard padding for everything that goes inside of it. Um, but then I've got my title container. It's just gonna maybe have the page title. Uh, we can just add that now. Audio chat GPT. Um, then it's gonna have our transcript of what we said, container for that. It's gonna have a container for the response that comes back and it's gonna have container for our audio player. So that's our HTML markup for the body. Okay, then we're gonna need to be able to run some JavaScript. So I'm gonna make a script tag here. I'm going to say the script is gonna live in scripts main.js. Need to create that. That is where that static directory that we set up in Node comes in handy, where we said that our static directory is gonna be public. It now knows that when we say scripts main.js, we mean public scripts main.js. So that's where we're gonna write our JavaScript. Same thing we're get, for style sheets, we're gonna need a styles directory and my style sheet's gonna be called main.css. So up here in the head, I'm gonna say styles main.css. Let's see what we've got now if I run start and I refresh. I've just got my page title here. Let's make sure we don't have any errors over in the console. We don't, so that means it has found our JavaScript and CSS files just fine. Okay, the last, last thing I think we should do to set ourselves up for success in the next step is to actually paste the stuff that's gonna go in each of these containers. So I've got all that here. Um, up in our title container, we probably want actually a separate container for this, but I'll just put it here. Um, we've got our button, so input type button. I gave it a class just in case we want to style it for non-sighted folks or people with accessibility issues and screen readers. We tell it it's a record button in this alt tag, and the button's just going to say record. Now, inside of our transcript, we just give it an H2 tag since we used an H1 before. And we're just going to say, you said, and we give it a container to print out what we said. And then here, we're going to say ChatGPT said, and same thing, give it a container. And then I've got this controls container. That's going to contain our audio player. It has no source file yet, so when we do have a file to play, that'll go in the source tag here, and we just gave it a class name, so we can style it as well. Probably don't need to. And then maybe we just write what you said, what ChatGPT said, oops, and then I think this actually goes in a value tag. So let's check that out on the front end and see what it looks like. Everything is there. It's not pretty, but we'll worry about that later. If you've done this sort of thing a million times, hopefully you skipped all this. If you haven't done this, but you don't care and you just want to get to the AI stuff, just grab the code and we'll start from there on the next video. Thanks.